What makes a country happy? In 2021, the UN published a report that gives a score to each country on Earth according to the following six factors. In order to analyze and draw conclusions from this data, we need to be able to understand or at the very least visualize it. Obviously, we cannot visualize six dimensions all at once, but we can pick two or three factors, for example, GDP, social support, and life expectancy, and visualize that. Here is Norway, for example, the US, China, Russia, and the rest of the countries. But if we do it this way, however, then we lose some possibly valuable information that might be contained in other factors of the data, like freedom or generosity. PCA is all about taking all factors, combining them in a smart way, and producing new factors that are one, and correlated with each other, and two, are ranked from most important to least important. These new factors produced by PCA are called principal components, and they are constructed in such a way that if you restrict your attention to the first few components only, you would still get a faithful representation of the data. Let us now explain how PCA picks its components. For that, let's take the same data as before, but limit ourselves to the first three columns only for simplicity, and drop a few countries so that the plot is not too cluttered. To pick the first component, PCA asks the following question. How can we arrange these points on a line in a way that preserves as much information as possible? A first attempt is to project all of these points on one of the 3D axes but that corresponds to throwing away all the other columns of the data. So maybe there is a better, less wasteful way. To answer that question, let's take a small detour to explain how projection works. When you project a point x on a unit vector u, you get a new point x prime whose magnitude is given by the inner product between x and u. And we can think of the square of this inner product as the amount of information about x that is preserved after projection on u. In particular, this quantity is maximal when x is parallel to u, and is minimal when x is orthogonal to u. Back to PCA, the first component that PCA picks is a unit vector that tries to preserve as much information as possible, so it maximizes the sum over all countries of the square of the inner product. While solving this optimization problem might look intimidating at first glance, it is actually surprisingly easy to solve if you use the so-called Lagrange multipliers method. If you're not familiar with the terms optimization or Lagrange multipliers, you can either simply ignore the next 20 seconds and just take the results we're going to reach for granted, or first go watch my beginner video series on optimization. So, in order to solve this problem, let's simplify the objective function a bit. With some not terribly complicated manipulations, we can rewrite this expression as u times the matrix c times u, where c is known as the covariance matrix of the data. We then form the Lagrange function, take the gradient with respect to u, and set it equal to 0. In conclusion, we know that the direction u that preserves information the most after projection satisfies the equation c times u equals lambda u for some unknown scalar lambda. And if this equation looks familiar to you, there is a reason. This is exactly the equation of the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of c. And interestingly, the amount of information preserved after projection on an eigenvector is given by the corresponding eigenvalue. So clearly, the best direction to pick is the eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue. So for our example, this is what the eigenvector with the biggest eigenvalue looks like. And one way to interpret this component is that roughly all three original factors have equal contribution. And for this reason, let's call this component power. When we project the data points on this component, we note that Icelandic countries that we normally associate with happiness, like Norway, for example, are all positioned high on this axis, while countries like Niger are positioned low. Of course, this representation is not perfect since you have countries like Singapore that rank high simply because they have an unusually high GDP. But this is to be expected though, because we have only looked at the first component that PCA gives. Let us now discuss the other components of PCA. How do we pick the second component, for example? Ideally, the second component is a unit vector that does not contain information that is already contained in the first component, or in geometric terms, we want the second component to belong to the subspace orthogonal to u1, but other than that, it should maximize the same quantity as before. And following reasoning similar to what we did before, we find that the second component is given by the second eigenvector of the covariance matrix of the data, and looks like this. In English, this component is the difference between individual factors and social factors. So let's call this component balance. If we project the countries on the plane spanned by the first and second component, we find that the happiest countries seems to be the most balanced ones, 
and countries that are either very high on the balance axis like Benin or very low like Turkmenistan are generally less happy. And it's very interesting to revisit the case of Singapore. So while it's doing great in terms of the power axis, the individualistic nature of its citizens seems to make it less happy of a country overall. More generally, the directions picked by PCA are exactly the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. You see, every symmetric matrix like C has n eigenvector and eigenvalue pairs that are orthogonal to each other. The eigenvectors are exactly the components that PCA picks, and the eigenvalues give you a sense of the importance of the corresponding eigenvectors. For our case, we see that PCA suggests to look mostly at the power component and only look at balance for a more refined analysis or to compare countries of comparable power. In fact, we can make things even more precise. If we divide all the eigenvalues by their sum, we see that the component power explains about 85% of the data, while balance explains about 10% of the data, and the third component explains the remaining 5%. This was the basics of PCA and how it can help you analyze high dimensional data. If you want to dive deeper into the topic, you can look at the references in the description. And if you like the video, like and subscribe and see you next time.